Hi, I'm Cheryl Holt, and I teach academic writing to international students at the University of Minnesota. Today's mini-lesson gives you guidelines about the use of a semicolon. A semicolon is a stronger stop than a comma, but not as strong as a period or full stop. It tells the reader, your sentence isn't over yet. But this isn't a clear enough explanation to understand when to use a semicolon in academic writing. The first use of a semicolon is between two closely related independent clauses or full sentences, as in this example. I'm scared, semicolon, you are too. Or, some people write stories, semicolon, others write poems. The clauses before and after the semicolon are complete sentences, but they're closely related and the writer wants to tell the reader the idea isn't finished yet. It is incorrect to use a comma between these two clauses since they are both complete sentences. You need a semicolon or a period. However, unless you are in a strong social science field, such as English literature, you're far more likely to use a period between all sentences in academic writing instead of a semicolon. In the U.S., technical and business fields strongly tend to use a period between all sentences, but British English tends to use the semicolon more in these situations. The most common use of a semicolon in academic writing is between list items if one or more of the items contains a comma, as in this complex example. The writer begins with an independent clause, remember that's a full sentence idea, followed by a colon to introduce the list. There are several important steps when analyzing a water sample, colon. Now he's going to list three steps, but in some of the main steps there are several items separated by commas, so the writer has to show which items go together and which steps are separate. The first step, collect preserve, and store the sample is all one step and is followed by a semicolon to separate this step from the next step in the list. Separate, identify, and measure contaminants in the sample, semicolon. And the last step in the list, report the results of the analysis. This is a complex sentence with commas in the lists, so the semicolons tell the reader how to separate the main steps. To make it even clearer, the writer could add numbers to separate the items, but the semicolons would remain. If a list has only commas between each item, there would be no need for a semicolon, and it would look like this with commas only between each item. Another use of the semicolon is between sentences separated by a transitional phrase, such as however, namely, therefore, and many others. Let's look at some examples. In this example, heavy fog has moved in. Consequently, all flights have been grounded. We have two independent clauses, full sentences, separated by the transition word consequently, with a semicolon after the first sentence. The same is true for this sentence. Hyperinflation makes it difficult to monitor prices. That's a full sentence. And tracking is essential is a full sentence and these sentences are separated by the transition word however. The first sentence is followed by a semicolon before however. Also notice that each of these sentences the transition word is followed by a comma. This is the traditional way to punctuate these sentences. Independent clause, semicolon, transition, comma, and clause. Here is the example sentence. The computer crashed. 
That's the first independent clause. Semicolon, however, comma, we restored the data, the second independent clause. However, in many business and technical fields, this traditional use of a semicolon is not commonly practiced. Instead of using a semicolon, they use a period and start a new sentence with however. Here's the example sentence. The computer crashed, period, new sentence. However, comma, we restored the data quickly. It's perfectly acceptable and very common in these fields to use a period instead of a semicolon. But remember, if you choose to use a semicolon, you need two independent clauses. Let's look at one more example of this contrast. These two examples mean exactly the same, but the first one uses a semicolon between the independent clauses, whereas the second example puts a period at the end of the first sentence. You'll need to figure out if your field tends to use the semicolon or a period. I want to warn you about one more way to use transition words like however in a sentence. If you have this sentence, we have a hard time, however, with this concept. The first clause, we have a hard time, is an independent clause, but the second one, with this concept, is not an independent clause, so however is surrounded by commas only. You should never use a semicolon unless both clauses are independent clauses. Start noticing semicolons in the journals of your field. How and where do they use them? See the other mini lessons in this series and chapter 9 in the textbook for more details on punctuation.